on this worship experience this morning. Have them call in on. Good morning and welcome to our service here at First Church of Christ Holiness, 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Deacon Joseph Phillips. I welcome you to our service where our pastor is the Bishop Dr. Delk Joe and our associate minister is Minister Demarquius Harvey. We are located at 789 Edgemont Avenue, in the city of Indianapolis, Indiana, where the mission of our church is to preach, proclaim, spread, encourage, and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in all parts of the world. Our scripture reading for this morning will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and I will be reading verses 17 through 22. In the following directives, I have no praise for you. For your meeting do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have, there, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers, suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this manner. I have read 1 Corinthians 11th chapter verses 17 through 22. Father God, as we come observing this, your communion in this scripture today, we thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy and for all that you have done for your people. We thank you for bringing us through this week and ask now that as we come to worship you, that, oh, Father, you would meet the needs of your people at this time. Bless us today and sanctify us. Bless those that are ill today. Send your healing power. Send your power, Lord, upon those who are in leadership positions that their hearts and their minds may be changed so that they will see that we serve a true and a living God. And when we walk away from your word or when we are contrary to your word, what we are seeing is what we will get. So, Lord, prick our hearts this morning, our minds and our souls, that, oh God, that we might worship you and live in accordance to your word. We ask it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and for his name's sake we pray. Amen. For those of you who would like to support our church this morning, there are three ways in which you may do so. You may send a check or a money order payable to First Church of Christ Holiness and mail it to 789 Edgemont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46208. You also may send us 
find us on PayPal. Our PayPal address is paypal.me backslash F-C-O-C-H-U-S-A-I-N-D-Y. And thirdly, you can set us up as a direct payee through your financial institution. Hopefully, within the next week, we will have a fourth method of giving, and we will announce it hopefully next Sunday. We thank God for you. We are now preparing our hearts and our minds to hear the word of God. As I leave this lectern, I will then transition to our spoken word with Dr. Dale Kajo, our senior bishop and pastor of First Church. God bless you. Lord, in our giving, amen, we're so happy to be able to give back just a small portion of what the Lord has blessed us with as we give back to a God who's given us everything that we need, food, clothing, shelter, and raiment, oh God, and we thank you so much. We do want to give this uh, a message in the uh, uh, scripture in your hearing. Uh, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. That's out of 2 Corinthians 9 and 11. Let's be generous uh, in our thanksgiving to God today as we prepare to give uh, back to the ministry that God has already ordained. Many of you have already sent donations to the electronic giving platforms and we thank you so much for all you've done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do today in this offering. We thank you so much that we can't continue to do what we do without your help and your support. If you're not tithing, we pray that you would trust God and, and challenge God in starting to tithe or increase your giving to God because God is faithful unto the children of men. And we thank you so much for what you've done in your giving. There are several giving opportunities. They'll be on your screen on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, those on the teleconference line, uh, we can give through text to give. Uh, you can uh, uh, text the word give to the number 219-600-8089. You'll get instructions on how you can complete that transaction. Uh, many are starting to use the uh, cash app. Our uh, handle on cash app is dollar sign YMCBA. Uh, you can also give through Givelify.com. Just search for Christ Temple Church at 4201 Washington Street. Gary, Indiana, or by the phone number, 219-884-1837. You'll see a photo of our church and the Cochusa logo as well. You can also uh, give through your debit or credit card. Just call me, Deacon James A. Tony Ross. My cell phone number is 219-718-6591. It takes take a few minutes to process your transaction uh, in a secure environment. You can also give through your online banking to your bank. Just set quite simple up as a payee, and your bank will send us, at your demand, a donation, and they will send it free. No stamp needed from you. Or you can always use the U.S. Postal Service. You can mail a check in for money orders to Quite Simple Church, 4401 Washington Street, Gary, Indiana, 46408. We want to thank you so much for your continued support of our church. Now, we want to pray and thank God for these provisions that he's given that you are giving back uh, into this ministry. Uh, blessed Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness unto the children of men. We thank you for the ability to be able to give back. We thank you, Lord God, for those that you have a desire and don't have it, but have a desire to give back. We pray that you would bless them to be able to have the provision to be able to give. And you said in your word, Lord God, that you love a cheerful giver. And we give cheerfully out of the love out of our heart recognizing your blessings that you've given to us. Nobody uh, has been as good to us as you have, so we bless your name today. We pray, Lord God, your anointed blessing upon this offering. We pray that we'll be great through it, and through the ministries of this church, we will get the word out that Jesus is yet mighty to save. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we thank you for this opportunity. Amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We are delighted to see all of you all worshiping with us this morning. How good is our God? And when we look at who we are and who God is, we can see, in fact, that uh, 
He has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Brothers and sisters, we ought to be glad that, uh, you know, we know Jesus. The, the, song, the song says all the time, I mean, I'm glad I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus. Yes, I know Jesus for myself. Amen. Woke me up this morning, gave me a brand new daughter. Yes, I know Jesus for myself. You got to know him for yourself. It is a great day to be alive and a great day to give God good praise because of who he is and what he has done for us. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul ought to cry out. Hallelujah. You ought to cry out. You ought to cry out. Hallelujah. And praise God for victory and for saving me and, and all of that. We thank God for that. We certainly want to welcome uh, the members of First Church this morning who are worshiping with us. First Church of Christ Holders USA, Indianapolis, Indiana. Amen. At 789 Edgemont Street in Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank God for you all's presence and worshiping with us today. Amen. God is yet good. And we certainly appreciate the prayers of the saints of God. And we thank God for you all praying for us as we uh, was in our district diocese convention this past week on Thursday night with um, some workshops on Friday with a uh, service um, uh, and hearing from our district chairman, Elder Michael Hudson. And uh, yesterday with all of the business of our church, our prayer time yesterday morning was Sister Joyce Ann Harris, Deaconess Joyce Ann Harris did a wonderful job. And, um, and then of course, uh, our business sessions and our closing service on yesterday afternoon. Thanks to all of you all who participated. Uh, certainly uh, one of our engineers was a part of the service, Sister Raina Jenkins, uh, dancing before the Lord. And we just wanna say thank you for doing an awesome job. And certainly to all of our engineers this morning, thank God for you all. Sister Jasmine Adams, Sister Latanya Harris, amen. Uh, Sister uh, Raina Jenkins, Sister uh, Kamalita Harris, thank you all so very much for helping us look good as we do what we do for the master. Certainly thank God for Deacon Ross who has helped us this morning with our devotion and also with our offerings. And uh, thank you also very much for giving as God has blessed you. Um, you know, we, we, we don't take it for granted, but we appreciate uh, your, the gifts that you have given to the Lord. Uh, the word of God says that the offering is holy unto him. Um, you know, when you give, you are giving to the Lord. And so we thank God for your ministry. All right, let's go a little bit further. Um, get your Bibles in your hand and uh, uh, help us this morning. It should be on your screen. This is the word of God. This is not a book about his word, but this is his word. This word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. This word is our spiritual mirror. God will show me things in my life that I need to change. This word holds the promises of life to me. If I abide in him and he abides in me, I can ask what I desire and it shall be done unto me. This word is God's word for my life. Praise God. Amen. You'll get it memorized after a while, after you start looking at it and reading it over and over and over and over again. All right. Turn with us in your Bibles this morning for the word of our God. And that is down in the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I want to read from verse 23 to verse 26, from 23 to 26, and Deacon Ross read from the 17th through the 22nd verse, I want to take it up from verse 23 to 26, this is the word of the Lord from the New King James Version, for I uh, received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it, uh, broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Amen. We'll go a little bit further in the midst of the message, but we will go a little bit further from that, uh, from verse number 27 to verse number 33 in the preaching of the word of our God. I want to talk just a little bit this morning from this subject, uh, the holy, the holy communion, the holy communion, the holy communion, the holy communion. This, this, this text is normally a text that is read um, just when we are about to do our communion service. If you ever been a, been a part of the body of Christ, you've been a part of the church, you'll know that uh, this, this text was, is normally read uh, for you or in your hearing um, during that communion celebration. It is a celebration. It is one of the ordinances uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to the body of Christ. It is, it is amazing that some of us recognize two of the ordinances and some recognize three of the ordinances that was given of the Lord. Um, uh, the, the, the three ordinances that he gave, there's not necessarily the three that, order that he recognized. You know, we have a way of eliminating some of what God said. Uh, but, but, but Jesus said uh, when he was doing the communion service, there was a foot washing ceremony that took place. Amen. Where he took off his, his robe and he girded himself and he washed the uh, disciples' feet. Amen. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, in that text, <coughs> excuse me, he says to do this. Uh, the other one is baptism, uh, the, the sacrament of baptism. Uh, before he left, he did say, um, uh, uh, you baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, you know, there is uh, some, some uh, uh, discussion and probably some disagreement in how we baptize. Some believe that baptism uh, is to be done in the name of Jesus only. Uh, when Peter was uh, preaching on the day of Pentecost, um, when 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 uh, <laughs> uh, when he was called back uh, from his backslidden state, let me let me just go back there for a minute. Uh, after Jesus left, uh, after he rose from the grave, and uh, they were not seeing him for a while, uh, Peter, along with six other disciples, um, backslid. Peter says, "I go a fishing." And the, the, the original text took him back to, I'm going back to what I am accustomed to. I am going back to where I came from. And so his spirituality left. He was in a backslidden state. He had walked away from God uh, and, and went fishing. Uh, that night. And the Bible says that that night they caught nothing. Jesus was on the seashore that following morning uh, having some bread and some fish already cooking on the shore. When they came ashore and he asked them, children, do you have any food? Do you have any meat? And they responded, no, Lord, we have nothing. And he says, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find. Amen. And so, and so uh, uh, they cast their net on the right side, and they found uh, 153 different species of fish that morning. It's amazing that they were fishermen, but whenever uh, Jesus showed up, uh, they never had any fish. That was the second occasion when they had no fish. So uh, 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 Peter, 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 when he came to shore, <clears throat> after they said that it was the Lord, uh, Jesus called Peter aside. Now, uh, it, it's amazing, it's amazing that even though there were seven of them that, uh, that were out there, six of them that had walked away with him, 
all in a backslidden state. Jesus did not say anything to the other, the, the, uh, other disciples, um, but he called Peter. See, 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 sometimes you got to correct some stuff and you got to call the leader. <laughs> you got to call the one that's the ringleader, the one that is causing all the trouble. You got to call him out. Listen, so Jesus called to Peter. He says, come on, let's take a walk and have a talk. Uh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let him tell him all about our struggles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Look, look, look. They didn't have to call far because Jesus was right there walking with him. And Jesus and Peter had that conversation. And Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my lamb. Peter, do you love me more than these? Feed my sheep. Uh, uh, the the, the three-time uh, request for a recommitment to the Lord that Jesus gave to Peter. And that corresponds to the three times that he denied the Lord uh, the night before the crucifixion. When they asked him, you talk like one of them. You look like one of them. The Bible says that Peter denied the Lord, not only denied, but he cursed and denied the Lord. Amen. And so Jesus wanted that recommitment from Peter and recommitted committed by Peter, uh, got the recommitment, reinstalled Peter, uh, Peter, forgave Peter, and gave him another opportunity to walk with the Lord. Now, 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 now I, I was having a conversation with somebody last night and and I said to them, what would have happened if Peter would have said, man, please, you're going back to your father. Uh, I see you later on. I'm going back to what I know. Uh, who would have preached on the day of Pentecost? Uh, not, not only that, not only that, but, but they all were in that upper room. Uh, Peter and those who had walked away with him. When Jesus said to them, you all stay here until you are endued with power from on high. Amen. Uh, if Peter had walked away, if Jesus had not uh, recommitted Peter and recommissioned Peter and reinstalled Peter, I don't know who would have preached that morning uh, when, the, when the Holy Ghost fell in the midst of the church. I, I come to tell you that Jesus is not going to leave you out there when he knows that you have a responsibility to him and the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, when we have a responsibility to the body of Christ, when we have been charged with the responsibility to the body of Christ, somebody ought to come get you and reinstate you, reinstall you to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Peter got reinstated and reinstalled. Now, 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 here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, Peter done preached to the body of Christ. And here we are now on the on 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 uh, 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 writing the writing to 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 uh, rather Saul is, is writing Paul writing to this Corinthian church a messed up church a church that we see in the text had some perverted stuff going on uh, here the, the three points is uh, the perversion of communion uh, the pattern of communion and the purpose of communion Amen Amen I know that ran by you kind of quick. The, the perversion of communion, the pattern of communion, and the purpose of communion. If it's holy unto God, uh, we ought to keep it holy. You know, the word of God says you ought to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. I, I just told you that the offering is holy unto God. We ought to keep it holy. Amen. 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 When, when, we, look at, when we look at what God has called us from and what he has called us to, we ought to keep that holy unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 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 uh, uh, here we are, here we are, the perversion of communion. <clears throat> uh, now, this, this church, this, <laughs> this Corinthian church, um, y'all heard the scripture that Deacon Ross read this morning. Um, you know, he says, I've given you these instructions and I do not praise you. This is the church. 
I keep on telling you, some of these letters Paul wrote, I don't know if Paul would have let it go viral if he knew it was going viral because they, they showed up went viral. Amen. He says, for first of all, when you come together as a church, here, here it is, Paul says, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it, for there must also be factions. Of, in other words, there are some favorite stuff going on in the body of Christ, and Paul is saying, what's going on in that church ought not be going on at all. Can I talk to you all a little bit this morning? Listen, body of Christ. Listen, listen, listen. This word was not sent to the sinners. This word was sent to the saints. This word was sent to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was sent to those who were walking with God in a new and a perfect way. But yet they were in a church that had some perversion going on. We cannot have perversion in God's house. What did Jesus say? He says, my father's house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. He was talking about even in the midst of worship, when they come together to worship, that they were selling the things that were ought to be offered unto God as an offering unto him. We cannot have this perverted sort of stuff going on in the body of Christ. It ought not happen in the church. Now, since it was happening at the church at Corinth, you know it only did not happen at the church at Corinth. It's as if everybody says, okay, well, I'm going to be just like the Corinthians. I'm going to do just what the Corinthians do. If the same thing that happened in Corinth is happening every place else. Paul says, you cannot have divisions. You cannot have factions and sects. Uh, sets in the midst of the church. We cannot have that kind of behavior going on in the body of Christ. Listen, listen. Not when it's coming to the communion that is holy unto God. He says, uh, he says, uh, I do not, I do not approve y'all in this kind of actions. He says, when you come together in one place, um, uh, verse, number, verse number 20, he says, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? For in eating, each take their own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, and look at this, and the other is drunk. I know he ain't talking to the church. Don't go back, go, go back, go back there. Don't, don't go so bad. I know he's not talking to the church. Paul, you see, the, 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 you see, the thing is this. The thing is this. When they went together for the Lord's Supper, they came together for the Lord's Supper. It was a meal. It was not, it was not what we do now with, with, uh, with a symbolized bread and symbolized wine. This was not symbolic. There was not a symbolic meal going on. It was a real meal that we all should eat together. See, uh, 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 Paul was implying that when you get your supper, let's just wait and everybody will commune together. This is what he's saying, you know, uh, one takes before another and he's eating and, and, uh, and, and, and somebody that didn't have supper or if they ran out, Somebody is hungry, and somebody else is coming to the Lord's table, and they're drunk. Huh? A part of the church, drunk? My God. Paul, look at a church y'all running over there. You know, uh, <laughs> I was listening to uh, someone talk about hypocrites in the church. <laughs> hypocrites in the church. And a hypocrite is said to be one who acts like one thing and they are actually another. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like you acting like you're a goat, 
but you're actually a sheep or the reversal. You acting like you're a sheep, but you're really a goat. Uh, you acting like you're saved, but you're really unsaved. You acting like you have Jesus, but you're really without Jesus. Uh, you acting like the folks who have a relationship with the master, but you really don't know the master. See, hypocrisy shows up when we display what we're not. Let me call one of these dear sisters to help me preach this morning. Sister Daisy Walker, Deaconess Daisy Walker, come help me preach this morning. This is what Sister Daisy Walker used to say. Be what you am. Because if you am what you ain't, then you ain't what you am. In other words, be who you are. Be what you are. If you're a believer, be a believer. If you're a sinner, be a sinner. Don't act like you're a saint and you know you're a sinner. Because when you act like you're a saint and you know you're a sinner, you're not a true sinner. Look, the devil don't want no fake sinners. <laughs> he wants true sinners. And the Lord don't want no fake Christians. He wants true Christians. If you're going to serve the Lord, serve him. And if you're going to serve the devil, serve him. Enjoy where you are. If you're going to enjoy Jesus on your journey, then enjoy Jesus on your journey. My God, my God, my God. The, the, this, this, this body of Christ. How can you come to the house of the Lord? And how can you come to the communion table? The holy communion. Not that you had a drink, but that you're drunk. Now, 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 don't put me out of the church. Uh, the Bible says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is in access. And we've said, let's, let's, let's leave it out altogether. We're not going to drink at all. Whereas in that way, we're going to keep it even for everybody. Because I may not know what my limit is. My limit might be a, a half a, a, a half a, what do y'all call those little cups? A, 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 a half a, a half a, a nip. Uh, we didn't call it nip, but you know, whatever it is. Uh, listen, listen, listen. W whatever, whatever, listen, whether it's half a, a nip or whether it's a, 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 a shot, a half a shot, whether it's a full shot, whether it's a full can or a full bottle, or, or whatever it is, you may not know what your limit is. But you ought to know what your limit is. You ought to know when you reach that limit. And you ought to stop before you get to that limit. Let me bring it a little bit easier for those who don't drink. You say, well, Pastor, I don't drink, so that ain't no problem for me. We ought to also know what our limit is with our food. Mm-hmm. You ought to know if you put three spoons of macaroni, two spoons of beans, two chicken legs and chicken thighs, uh, 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 a, a spoon of greens and cornbread, you know, and then you add the cake on top of that with the ice cream, and then you got a glass of punch. You know it's too much. You know it's too much. Listen, you ought to know your limit. Whatever your limit is, you ought to know your limit. And Paul was saying, don't come to the Lord's Supper without control of, uh, God have mercy, Jesus, without control of your appetites. It's not just the food, it's not just the drink, but it is our appetites. And whatever your appetites is controlling, listen, then control that appetite. Don't show up at the Lord's table out of control. Jesus have mercy. He said, don't show up at the Lord's table and you have no, uh, man, I got to move on. Look, 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 look. Paul says, don't come to commune in the house of the Lord and you are out of control. Be in control of whatever is going on in your life. I talk a little bit here. I'll make up for it. 
This is what this is what this is what we say. Well, I ain't drinking, I ain't smoking, I ain't sexing, uh, I ain't uh, you know I ain't sexting, I ain't I ain't doing none of that stuff that is what we call worldly. But you're out of control as a believer in Christ. You're out of control with your language. You ain't cussing. But you out of control with your speech. You got gossip. You're spreading stuff that you don't know if it's the truth or not. So you got slander. You out of control. Your actions are out of control. Or you ain't saying nothing, but your body language is telling the whole story. You out of control. And Paul is saying, don't come to the Holy Communion table. And you are out of control. Let me move on. Let me move on. He says, so, 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 first of all, first of all, your conduct or your perversion of the communion has got to get right. Your perversion of the communion uh -huh, has got to get right. Now, the second thing that Paul says, the second thing that Paul says was, not only is there perversion, but there is a pattern that's been laid out for communion. There's a pattern. And Paul, 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 Paul says, Paul says, there are, there are some gross corruption and irregularities. And um, he says, you, you, ought to, you ought to be able to look at where you are and what God is representing with the body of Christ, with the Holy Communion, and know, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt where God is and what God is saying. This is what Paul says in verse number 23. For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you. Sit up there for a minute. Paul says, that which I got from God is what I'm giving to you. And there are too many times we got stuff, but it ain't from God, but we want to give it to the body of Christ. Listen, brothers and sisters, that is not how it works. Well, God told me to tell you, God ain't said nothing. God ain't, God ain't said nothing. Hallelujah. God, look, God knows how to talk to some folk for himself. Well, God told me to tell you A, B, C, D, E, F, N, G. And God ain't said nothing. You know, the Bible talks about false prophets and false prophecy. And we get too many false prophets and too much false prophecy going on in the body of Christ. My God, my time is getting away from me. The word of God says, he says, what I got, I gave you. And what I gave you is from the Lord. He says, and when we look at it, he says, the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. So what's going on is, he says, listen, the body of Christ, the bread, represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he is saying, look, 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 look. Uh, he took the bread, and, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to them, and he says, do this, why? In remembrance of me. In remembrance of my past, my crucifixion for you, in remembrance of my present, my going to prepare a place for you, and in remembrance of my coming again. He says, until I come. Uh, 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 verse number, number, number 26 says, do it until I come. So in remembrance of my past, in remembrance of my present, and in remembrance of my promise, which is the future, I am coming again. If we ever wanted to find out what Jesus was talking about and what he meant with his holy communion, it is a look back at his crucifixion, a look presently at his preparation, and a look coming or future for his uh, preparation to come and receive the body of Christ. He says in the same manner, he took the cup, which is the blood. 
He says the blood, this, this, uh, 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 this new covenant, the blood uh, that was that was uh, shed for you. He says, drink it in remembrance of me. You got to take the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, there are some religions that believe that once they bless the bread and the wine, it is not a symbol, but it is the actual body and blood of the Lord. That's what they believe. Uh, 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 but, 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 but this text doesn't tell us to believe that. This text tell us to do it in remembrance. This text, listen, you ain't got to fall out with nobody about, about, about their beliefs. And no, no, you ain't got to do all of that. Just go with what the word of God said. Amen. Look, look, look. He intends for us to have a holy communion and he lays out the pattern. He lays out the pattern that is to be done as often as you do it. I was talking to a good friend of mine and um, um, he said, to Joe, you all not having communion today, which was last Sunday. I said, no, it's the 4th of July. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, uh, interrupt people's um, outings and so forth and so on. So no, we're going to have communion next week. And it was as if the Bible says, and on the first Sunday of every month, thou shalt have communion. No, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, as often, go to verse number 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I have some friends that have communion in every service that they have at the church. Every service. And it's not only the Catholics that's doing it. In other words, if they have three services a Sunday and one on Saturday and one on Friday, whenever they come together, they're going to have communion. The only time they don't have communion, in other words, Catholics, the only time they do not have communion is on Good Friday. They said, well, no, we ain't going to do it Good Friday because, see, this is the day that he shouldn't have died on the cross of Calvary. We don't have to remember his death. We're going to celebrate his death. All right? Let me move on. Uh, uh, he says, so as often as you do it, now, whether it's Sunday morning or whether it's Sunday night, you know, now, we got, we got all kind of hang-ups as to how we ought to do communion and when we ought to do it and what we ought to do it with. My Lord, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> heard about the, the, the folks that's having communion with with uh, with Seven Up, and the folks that's having communion with uh, with uh, with the Coca Cola, and the folks that's having communion with Kool Aid, and and the folks that's having communion with grape juice, uh, whether it's white grape juice or it's grape grape juice, and the folks that's having communion with real wine, the real deal. Listen to me. What you put on that table and you bless representing the body and blood of the Lord, whether it's bread and wine or whether it's steak with macaroni and cheese, red beans and rice, greens and cornbread, whatever it is, whether it's a full supper, if you bless it and you break it, and the name of the Lord as communion, he said, the pattern is you do it in remembrance of me. Don't fall out with me now. Don't fall out with me. I know it's got to be bread and wine. It's got to be juice. And then don't fall out with me. We ain't got to fall out over communion. I got a whole lot of other stuff to preach besides communion. And don't fall out with me over this. Amen. Amen. Let me move on. Not only is there a pattern for communion, so you got the bread that represents his body, and you got the wine that represents his blood. And he's saying that you are to partake of the body and blood of the Lord. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And normally that's what you would hear when the deacons or myself, whenever we, we celebrate communion, uh, you, you, you know, you will hear, you know, take this, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is broken. 
uh, the cup of the Lord, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Amen. Let's move on. I, I got to quit. The last point is that um, um, uh, 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 the Holy Communion, he dealt with the perversion of communion. He dealt with a pattern of communion. And then he, now he deals with the purpose, the purpose of communion. Now I'll jump on down to verse number, <clears throat> verse number 26 and then verse number 28. He says, for as often as you eat this bread, and we talked a little bit with this just now, and you drink the cup, what did it say? You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. God intended for us to talk about his son, Jesus Christ, and to recognize the purpose for which we commune with his body and blood as remembering his dying on the cross for our sins and remembering his coming to claim us as his bride. And brothers and sisters, I come to tell somebody this morning that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. No, he is not coming for the Church of Christ Holy Ness USA. No, he is not coming from the Baptist Church, for the Methodist Church, for the Apostolic Church, for the Catholic Church. No, he's not coming from a church. He's coming for a body of believers. He's coming for those who love him, for those who have surrendered their lives to him, for those who have given this world up and is taking on Jesus Christ. He is coming for a church who believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he don't care what denomination it is. He is coming for that church. You see, we get hung up on what the denomination is. You don't get hung up on the car you drive. All of them got a steering wheel. All of them got a brake. All of them got, got to be run by gas or diesel or electricity. All of them has got to get, get, you know, it, it, all of them has got some extra stuff in it. You don't need all that extra stuff. All you need to make sure is that you got a steering wheel, you got a brake, you got some power, you got something that can, can make it go and something that can make it stop. This is all the word of God is. Listen, this is the power of God. This is the steering wheel. This is the brake. This is the gas. Listen, all you need is the word of the living God. And God is saying, I am coming for a body of believers who loves me, who have surrendered to me. And it doesn't matter what kind of car you're driving, well, which means it don't matter what kind of religion you're in. If you believe that Jesus is the son of the living God, you will be saved. That, that, that's what the text says in the book of Romans. You got to believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave and he saves you from your sins. I got to quit. I got to quit. Uh, whether you are part of the perversion or you're trying to get into the pattern or you're trying to handle the purpose, you start talking about the Holy Communion, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is saying to us, we ought to be ready. Now, now my time is gone, but let me say this real quick. The other verse says, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of their cup. For he that eateth unworthy un eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserving the Lord's body. Real quick, real quick. Examination is for you to do individually. Examination is not for us to do as a body. And if you look at the text a little closer, you will see that we don't have to examine anyone because the word says that God chastens. The person who chastens is the person who's doing the examining. And we can't chasten you. God chases you. And so we also can't examine you. Don't look around with what's going around you. Don't look out of what's happening over there. Look within and see what's going on down on the inside of you. Let a man examine himself. You examine you and make sure you are worthy to partake of the body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
He says, uh, you know, if, if you don't examine yourself and if you don't judge yourself, he said, that's why many are sick and weak among you and many sleep. The body and blood, and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to give you that spiritual strength to keep on walking with the Lord Jesus. It's a reflection of looking back at the cross, looking present to his preparation and looking forward to his coming again. And brothers and sisters, we can all prepare to do that, to meet our loving God when we look at who Jesus is, why he has done what he has done, and he's coming for a church without spot, without wrinkle. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is there somebody here this morning saying, Pastor Joe, I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I want the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to come into my life, to save me from my sins, to make me a new creation in him. That I'm extending the, the, the doors of the church. I'm opening the doors of the church for you, uh, for candidates for baptism, for those of you who want to be baptized, for those of you who want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and for those who want to become a part of this body of Christ. The first call is for salvation. you got to be saved up out of your sins. He said, marvel not, you must be born again. If you're going to enter in at the straight gate, you must know Jesus for yourself. Is there one who is willing to say, Pastor Joe, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. I want to be a Christian in my heart. Is there one that's saying, Pastor Joe, I want to become a part of the body of Christ. I want to be part of this body of Christ. Then the, the doors of the church are open for you. We'll take you in. Uh, if you're in Northwest Indiana here at Christ Temple Church at 4201 Washington Street or at First Church in Indianapolis, Indiana at 789 Edgewood Street. Either way it goes, we want to take you in as a member of our church because we want you to receive the instruction and the information to walk with God in a holy, right, and righteous way. Is there one? Is there one? Pray this prayer with me. Father, we ask that you forgive me my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and make me worthy to stand before your presence. We pray right now, oh God, that as we plan for our communion service, even this afternoon at one o'clock, that God, we will examine ourselves. And so let us eat after examining ourselves and finding ourselves worthy. After we have confessed our sins to you, uh, we can partake of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, that you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and make us righteous and make us right to walk with you in newness of life. So thank you for your forgiveness. We pray for those right now who desire baptism to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then we pray, oh God, for those who desire to be a, come, a, come a part of this body of Christ. Bless them in a special way in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer with me and you want to become a part of us, then send me an email, kajo5301 at gmail.com. Kajoa5301 at gmail.com. Uh, send us that email. Let us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you want to become a part of the body of Christ. That you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you want to walk with him in newness of life. We will send you some information so you can walk with this King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And walk successfully with the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. And may God give you his peace. Until we see you again next Sunday morning, same time, same station, at 11 a.m., call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them to join you in worship with Christ at the church in Gary, Indiana. Whether or not, you know, you, you, you were able to catch us right now, this broadcast will be uploaded to Facebook, and it's also uploaded to YouTube. Take them on there. You all go on and watch it as a watch party. Call your friends, and y'all go ahead on and watch the service one more time. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his grace shine, his face shine upon you, and may he give you his peace. Have a great day and have a great week, and we'll see you again next Sunday morning. God's blessings to you.